Amanda here from createyourfuture.co. So today I have an exciting video. I'm going to talk about how to manifest a commitment. And I'm also going to share my own personal success story of how I manifested Andrew wanting to marry me. And uh, when he maintained since the day I met him, he did not want to get married again. So um, yeah, it's a really exciting video, guys. I just want to say I have a course, Create the Relationship You Love. It's all about recreating people. It'll help guide you through um, you know, what you need to do to dig out your old subconscious story and start creating a new story so you can recreate anyone with it, a boss, a friend, a specific person. <laughs> an SP specific person. <laughs> um, absolutely anybody. So it's a really great course link in the description below. And of course, you guys love to know when people are putting out new courses here or coaches or when they're having a sale. Definitely, if you like a deal, sign up for our mailing list. It's the links in the description below. And of course, we're having a contest. Details again are in the description below. But guys, um, one of the parts of it is subscribe and comment. You know, what have you manifested using the law of assumption? Now, no matter how big or how small you might think it is, definitely post it because something that was really small to you may be something huge to somebody else. So when we're sharing these success stories, we're inspiring each other, we're helping each other to be better and to reach you know, what we want in our lives because every single one of you guys are a creator. You're a very powerful creator. And yeah, you create your reality the way that you see it. So yeah, it's exciting. I love it. So guys, let's dive into it how to manifest a commitment. So as you guys know, um, you know, I did meet Andrew, we started dating and, um, you know, and I'll go through the whole story. So we were dating and, um, and we we're seeing each other once a week. And then I started saying, well, you know what, I intend to start seeing him twice a week, right? So we started, you know, having dinner and hooking up, like, you know, hanging out twice a week, right on the weekends. And then, you know, I started intending, you know, because part of what my goal was, was to have a relationship where I was with someone every single day, had dinner with them and watch TV with them and just like, you know, have someone spending all their time with me. So I knew my end goal was to be in a relationship and have that. So I started in intending right away that he comes over every night and has to dinner with me and he watches TV with me, da, 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 da. So basically I started creating that, but then he told me that he didn't want a committed relationship again because he was previously married and he had baggage. So I, even though he was showing up with, you know, the things I was wanting to see here and feel if I was in a relationship, the dinner and hanging out and watching TV with me and hanging out and spending all his time with me and hanging out with me on the weekends, then he was still blocked with the wanting a commitment part. And so I remember, you know, I started thinking about it and I asked him, I'm like, do you want to move in with me one day? And he said, no. And I started crying and I was like, well, then that's it. I'm not wasting my time. If you don't want a relationship and you don't want to commit with me, then I don't want to do this anymore. You know, and I actually said that to him and he looked at me and he said, do you want me to leave? And I was like, no, I don't actually. And I thought about it and I'm like, wow, I'm throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You know, like I'm like totally reacting. So I had to accept my current reality in that moment. And I dried up my tears a bit. I looked at him and I said, you know what? I said, I like what we have and I like spending time with you. If you're not ready for a relationship, like to move in with me right now, then I am totally okay with that. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. Forget I said anything. I'm sorry. And he was like, okay. He's like, do you want to watch TV? And I'm like, yeah. And then we watched TV cuddled. Now, I was also creating at the same time that we were looking for condos together to buy, right? Because again, that was part of my end goal. So that did show up, but it didn't show up in the way I wanted it because what ended up happening was for the next five days, okay, I'm intending, intending my butt off. Every time I think about him, I'm like, no, he wants to be in a relationship with me. He wants to move in with me. He's ready. And he was taking me condo shopping every single night. And when we went condo shopping, he was saying, oh, these are for me. These are for me and he was like right in my face and I had to accept my current reality he even took me to a few to see a few like condos and townhouses that were 55 plus so I wouldn't qualify to live there because I wasn't over 55 and one of the you know the their 
their rules are you got to be over 55. So I was like, oh. so I was faced with this for like five days. Okay. Every night going and look at these condos with him, but I didn't get upset at him. I just, you know, I said, Oh, do you think you would like that? Is there enough parking spots? You know, but in my mind, when I was looking at the condos, I was like, that's going to be my bedroom. Oh, that's where my closet's going to be. Oh, I'm going to put my stuff there and that there. And I just kept creating that in my head. Right. So then finally, right, it was like, I was intending, I was intending, I got to the point where, you know, I was like, I was just okay with it. Like, I just accepted that what was showing up in my reality of him not wanting to live with me and him looking to buy condos on his own and bringing me along with him just to like, basically like how I was feeling, rub it in my face. But I just decided to just like, to just accept it. Just, okay, fine. This is the way it is. I've created this, right? Rather than be angry about it and push him away. So and then what happened was, was it was a Saturday. Again, we were looking for condos for him. And then all of a sudden he looks at me and he's like, you know what? And we we're having lunch at this restaurant because we were looking at condos, right? And then he says, he looks at me, he goes, you know what? And I said, what? He goes, you're not crazy. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. And he was like, so I was thinking, maybe you want to move in with me. And I was like, ah. So anyways, I ran to the bathroom, started screaming. I came back, sat down. And all of a sudden in that moment, he was like, so what kind of places do you want to live in? What kind of condo would you like to buy? And I, it just switched in a second like that, right? Just switched in a second. And a week later, we were living together. So, I mean, part of what had blocked it, right? The getting that commitment of moving in together was basically, I was like, where are we going to live? And I wasn't sure if I was ready to move in with him. Um, and mixed in with, I had the story that all guys that were previously married had baggage, right? Yeah. So now, Fast forward, we're living together now for a few years, right? And um, I bring up, well, do you want to get married? And he says, no, I never want to get married again. And I'm look, I'm thinking to myself, right? I was like, okay. And so again, I didn't, this time I didn't react because I mean, we already lived together. Like, what's the big deal? So then I was like, okay, fine. I was like, fine. I'm like, you don't want to marry me. I'm like, that's totally fine. And then I started thinking to myself, I'm like, you know what? No, I'm like, he's going to think that because we're, we live together, we're pretty much married anyway. Because in Canada, there's something thing called common law. So is, as far as the government's concerned, after you live with someone, I think for six months or two years or something like that, they changed the, the requirement. You're basically considered a common law couple and you guys are pretty much married as far as the government's concerned, like, you know, as far as taxes and whatnot go. So I just started saying to myself, I'm like, yeah, we're pretty much married anyway. We're pretty much married anyway. We're pretty much married anyway. And I never brought it up again to him. I said, he wants to marry me because we're pretty much married anyway. It's not going to change anything. We're just going to have this huge, great party and all of our friends and everything there. And, you know, and, and yeah, we'll just get some rings, you know, like it's, it's not a big deal. Andrew wants to get married again. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, we're driving and I had a meltdown that morning. <laughs> about something completely different. Anyway, we're, we went for a walk and we're driving and I thought we were just going home. And he says, I want to go to the mall. And I said, why do you want to go to the mall? And he's like, because I want to go ring shopping with you. And I just started bawling. And you know what he said? I said, I said, really? I'm like, it's okay. You told me you didn't want to get married. And then he said to me, he's like, well, you know what? We're pretty much married anyway. I was like, oh my God, every, it echoed right back, like right back to me. So guys, that's, you know, there's always, <laughs> that's my story of how, um, you know, that we actually um, got together. So, you know, that's, that, that's how those, that's my success story of how, you know, I've gotten married is, you know, I, I did react once and it's okay when we wanted to move in together. It's okay. You're allowed to react. That's not going to change anything, you know, but it's about changing the story afterwards. So I have some tip for you guys about how to create a commitment in your life. So you want to look at what does the commitment look like to you? What are you going to see, hear, and feel? So the first stage of my commitment, the big deal to me was moving in together. For me, moving in together meant that was a commitment to me. So for me, commitment meant him moving in with me, spending every night with me, having dinner with me, spending all his time with me, doing everything with me. That's my idea of a commitment and a relationship that I want. Okay. So you really want to take a look at that. You know, you can say, well, they commit to me, but then they're out at the pub every night with their friends and spend more time with their friends than you. What does your commitment look like? Okay. Maybe you don't want to live with them. Maybe you just want them, you know, the, what the, the commitment to be that, you know, they, they include you in things like what does commitment look like to you? Because commitments 
means a very general word and it looks different to everybody. So sit down. When I have a commitment, what am I going to see here and feel? What are we going to do together? What does that entail? What is my life going to look like when I'm in a commitment with this person? Okay. So you want to get clear on what your end goal is, and then you want to listen to yourself. <laughs> you want to listen to your thoughts, okay? And you want to listen to your thoughts and go, okay, I had a thought. Now, is that thought in line with my end goal? So let's say, for instance, right? And actually, this is a true story. When I was manifesting spending every night with Andrew, right, his office was actually just two blocks away from my house, and he lived 20 minutes away from my house. So I was really close to his office. So my story was perfect. It was like, yeah, he comes over after work every night after work because I'm like two blocks away. And we have dinner, we watch TV, and then he goes home, right? And that was my story. But every once in a while, I think to myself, oh, what happens if he's working late? And then sure enough, guess what? We get a text message, I'm working late. And I'd be like, oh my goodness. One time it was like, it was, he normally came over at 5.30. It was already like eight o'clock and he showed up and dinner, I had it warming for him. And, and you know, it was a really quick visit because, you know, he went home around 10 all the time. So, you know, you want to listen to your thoughts. Okay. So if your thought is that they spend every minute with you, then if you're thinking, oh, they're probably going to go out with their friends on Friday night. Okay. That thought we've got to not have, we've got to acknowledge it and change it to no, they're going to spend Friday night with me instead. Okay. So you want to watch every thought that you're having that's contrary to what your goal is. You want your thoughts to be in line with that end goal. Okay. So basically my thought changed from, oh, he's going to be working late to no, Andrew's always, you know, always finished his work at five o'clock and he's here by 520 every single time, every single day. And he always comes over because he wants to be here. Now that's the next thing. Okay. What's that person thinking? What are they thinking about you and the relationship? What do they think about commitments? What's your assumptions about them and commitments? Okay. You really want to take a dive into that. What do you think that they think? I mean, that's very important. I mean, me, I was creating the assumption that, you know, Andrew was previously married and he had baggage and didn't want to do it again because obviously that marriage didn't work out. Well, I mean, that story didn't work for me because he said the exact same thing. I've been married before. It didn't work out. And I was like, ah, of course, of course. So you want to watch what your assumptions of them are. Okay. You know, you know, the story has got to be, they're ready for a commitment. They want the same things that I want. They're ready to do this with me. Right. Now, one of the most important thoughts is <laughs> don't talk bad about the other person to anybody, anybody. Okay. So for instance, you know, um, you know, people would ask me, you know, oh, what's going on with you and Andrew? And, you know, I would basically, let's say we were in the, you know, the, the phase of, you know, um, you know, uh, like we were seeing each other every night, but didn't want to move in with me. If someone said, oh, so what's going on with you and Andrew? Are you guys moving in together yet? I would say, well, you know, I mean, I'm not sure we're quite ready, but I'm sure we're going to be very soon. Okay. So I would say it like that. So I wouldn't, outright lie, you know, but I mean, you know, it's nothing's a lie that you say or think because everything you say or think is the truth because you create it. You know, I mean, I've even gone as far as saying to somebody, oh yeah, he totally wants to live with me. And then that's actually worked. So if you're comfortable with going straight to, you know, someone says, hey, how's so-and-so doing? Are you guys back together? And you're not, you can go straight to, yeah, we're totally back together. If you're comfortable with that, I would totally do it. But if you're not comfortable with that, you can be like, well, you know, I mean, we're working on it. We're going to work it out. We're going to be back together for sure. You know what? He absolutely loves me, you know, or, you know, we're not quite back together yet, but we're going to be, well, I know we're going to be, and it's going to happen soon. You know what I mean? So you can create, you know, stating what your current reality is and then following it up with what you actually are intending. Do you know what I mean? Because no one's ever going to be like, oh, I thought you guys were going to get together or I thought he was going to move in with you, right? You can be like, oh, you know, I changed my mind because it is you creating all of it anyway. But my point is, is watch what you say to other people, okay? So if I was to sit down with my best friend every single night and complain to her about how Andrew doesn't want to move in with me and he doesn't want a commitment and how I'm wasting my time, I'm only going to create more of that, okay? So we create in our language when we talk to other people. We also create with our thoughts when we think. We're always constantly creating. Okay. We're constantly creating. So we want to watch what we say. Okay. And you know what? Everyone's you pushed out. If you're uncomfortable, somebody asking you about your relationship status or whatever, then intend that they, pardon me, never talk about it. They always talk about something else instead. You know, I would say they never bring up, you know, Jerry, they never ask about Jerry. You know, I would definitely do that. Now that I spoke about Jerry, oh my guys, ah, here he is. <laughs> Jerry showed up. <laughs> okay. So 
Yeah, that's my success story is, you know what, get clear with yourself. Are you ready for a commitment? Okay, what does your commitment look like? What are you guys going to do? What are you going to see, hear, and feel? What is your assumptions about the person, Jerry, that you want to be in a commitment with? And what do you think their thoughts are and their feelings are about it? What do they think? You create that too. Nobody's outside of you, right? If you say, well, if I say, hey, you know, what about Jerry? Are you guys getting together? Well, I don't know. Jerry said that he's got bad baggage doesn't want to commit it's like why 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 give them that power no that was your previous thought okay so you know you want to catch those things right and you and you want to recognize that everything in your 3d is just a reflection of your previous thoughts everyone is you pushed out and your thoughts are constantly being transmitted out there okay so if you want to change what's happening in your outer world you've got to change what's happening in your inner world okay so your thoughts also known as your imagination like in neville says it um you know your inner world uh, you change you no one to change but yourself now i'm not saying change yourself in the way of you know change your self-concept be more confident yes maybe you need to do that but you need to also need to change your assumptions of the other people and your assumptions of items like commitment and you know those sorts of things right so you've got to change your whole entire perspective about the entire situation yeah i think that's in a nutshell i think this is probably one of the longest videos i've done in a long time but anyways yeah you guys asked i made it so yeah, so thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And Jerry says, hello. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, guys, thanks for uh, for making this channel absolutely amazing and sharing it with everybody. Um, I've shared, you know, what I do with so many people. And I can tell you that, first of all, if you think people are going to think you're crazy, intend that they don't. I basically intend that everybody is familiar with the law of assumption, law of attraction. And, you know, by sharing it with people, you help them. And if you share it with people that are close to you, you know, like, for instance, Andrew didn't know about any of this until he met me. And then he learned about law of assumption when he met me. And, you know, it's changed his life as well. So, you know, and our relationship is better now that he knows about it because I can hold him accountable. <laughs> even though I create it. <laughs> anyway, but guys, thank you for sharing. Let's share um, out there with everybody and, you know, help help them to have what they want in their life. And um, yeah, I intend that everybody gets something from this video and yeah, that you guys all manifest exactly what you want in this life. Okay, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.